Big up the Elephant Graveyard. Absolute G. The title is Burn the Boats is the Funeral for Joe Rogan Comedy Career. No, sorry. Burn the Boats is the Funeral for Joe Rogan's Comedy Career. Um, let's see it and let's see what I want. You can watch it yourself. There's a title. You see the URL on the page. I'm going to be pausing and stopping it from time to time. Don't be annoyed or pissed off that I do so. That's the way these kind of live streams work. If you want to watch it yourself, the link is there. Please understand. Be patient with me. Let's watch it together. Let's fucking go, Elephant Graveyard. Finally, finally, the time has come. The comedy event of the year finally arrived. It's been six long years since we got a brand new hour of material from comedy's most valiant defender, the great and powerful Joe Rogan. Every era of comedy has its greats, guys. And you may not like it, but Joe is inarguably one of the greats now. He is the biggest and most successful comic on earth and the valiant leader of the highly endangered 250 comics. <laughs> In case you don't know what I'm talking about and have had your head planted for- Is it 250 or 300? I know it was originally 1,000. I know it was originally 1,000. And then it went to 300, but I thought it was 250. I think the latest, I saw a clip of him saying, no, it's actually only 250 of us out there. I swear he said 250. Maybe I'm mistaken, I don't know. Let's continue firmly in the sand for the past six years there are only 250 comics oh, it's left me. in the entire no, it's world me. it's me it's me there's so up. few of us and worldwide we were talking oh he said it 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 and for the past six years there are only 250 comics left in the entire world because yeah. there's so few of us and worldwide we were talking about this the other day there's maybe 500 of us on the planet <laughs> You know, you got to be real generous and say 500 because it's really probably about 250. Whoa. Right. But like legit comics, guys you want to hang out with, guys who are. I think, I think, I think, honestly, I think Rogan just sees the that number thing as a brotherhood more so. As in, like, the amount of professionals who make money from stand up. I don't think he means it as, like, a comedy thing. I hope so. I hope not. I hope he doesn't include himself in, like, the 200 most funniest people in the world. Like, cause that's, that's obviously a lie, but I think he means more so as in the brotherhood of people that he sees on tour, going around places and shit. I hope that's the case. I hope so. I hope that's the case. For fun, please say you want to hang out with me. And the future looks grim for the 250, sadly. Only a couple years ago, there were still 2,000 of them, which isn't a lot, but still. They're dwindling fast, suffering many, many casualties, but Joe's doing his best to protect them, which is big up z they all receive a letter to tell them they're special like at hogwarts <laughs> yeah or like on the fucking what's that thing called the umbrella academy right they like <laughs> on the same day all their specials get launched you know <laughs> they all get picked to join the umbrella academy the stand-up academy <laughs> number one number two number four number seven <laughs> admirable considering he's the greatest stand-up comedian of our time as you can see he's earned his spot amongst heroes like robin williams richard pryor bill hicks all these guys and maybe you disagree but we have no objective way to measure the quality of a comic other than by their revenue i have what you call fuck you money so this multi-millionaire is by f <laughs> i love the sincerity in the graveyard's voice we have no other way to quantify how funny someone is apart from how much money they have. So clearly Rogan must be the greatest of all time. <laughs> He's taking the piss. He's actually taking the piss. Far are the best of the best. My parents had George Carlin and Richard Pryor. <laughs> My grandparents had acts like the Marx Brothers, Red Skelton, exactly. and Al Jolson. Exactly. Oh, wow. Jesus and we... Christ. We are truly Jesus blessed Christ. because Jesus Christ, that might be a Halloween costume. I might have to do that as a Halloween costume. Can, have you ever seen a black person put on blackface? That might actually be an interesting thing, right? Like see an actual person put on like blackface, like actually darken themselves on purpose. I might have to do that for a Halloween costume. That might have to be a thing. Or maybe for like the 300th episode or something, I might have to turn up and like, it's happy to be here. Like some fucking gollywog. That would be fucking jokes, wouldn't it? I'd definitely be demonetized forever, innit? Hey, Ruben Rivera, you're banned. Ruben Rivera, you're banned. Don't ever say that about my goat. You're banned, Ruben Rivera. Young Old Vibes, you're banned. <laughs> you're banned. Everyone, you're banned. Don't say that about my goat. 
as we get to exist on this planet at the same time as guys like Andrew Schultz. Now that right there was a seamless transition into an ad if I've ever seen one before. Flawless perfection, and you deserve it, but so does betonline.ag. Bert Kreischer. Oh my, no way. I don't remember that. Did he have a, did he have an ad hard baked into his comedy special like that? No way. Yo, you Andrew Schultz fans, you have a lot to answer for. Your go is fucking hard baking ads for Bet Online AG on his special. That is flagrant. That is absolutely fragrant, isn't it? Like that podcast name is chosen for a reason. Jesus Christ. And you deserve it, but so does betonline.ag. Bert Kreischer. Tony Hinchcliffe. Hello, I'm Tony Hinchcliffe. Nah, that's a rude. That's fucking rude. Elephant Graveyard's rude. That is rude editing. He just had Burt Kreischer walk on stage with a shirt, take off his shirt, and then sip some beer. And that was it. He didn't say a single word. <laughs> Elephant Graveyard is rude. That is so rude. That is his comedy material. Walks on stage, takes off t-shirt, drinks beer, walks off stage. <laughs> But so does betonline.ag And the crowd goes wild <laughs> Tony Hinchcliffe Hello, I'm Tony Hinchcliffe Come check out Jesus Christ, bro I know Red Bar doesn't like Tony Hinchcliffe's fashion I know Red Bar takes a piss out of Tony Hinchcliffe's wardrobe But Tony Hinchcliffe kind of glowed up, in it. He used to look rough, in it. He used to look fucking rough Fucking hell I'll kill Tony tonight. Watch me do magical stuff like that. I was shocked like a motherfucking dog. Everybody knows that you need a hug. What's up, bitch? I'm a motherfucking lobster. Nailed it. And of course, their comedy father, who keeps them all well fed like little birdies in a nest, Joe Rogan. Thank him. This thing was shot in San Antonio, Texas, where those few brave warriors once defended the Alamo in that big battle. It's a lot like the 250 defenders of comedy. Against all odds, they prevailed. And thank Christ they did. This is cinematic shit, man. Honestly, Elephant Graveyard, man. Well done already. This is some cinematic stuff. This must have took a fucking long time to edit. This is so unnecessary. This is the level of hate I aspire to be at. This is the level of hate I want to achieve. I want to, I want to aspire to achieve this level of hate where you commit an entire weekend to editing a video where you just shit on someone special <laughs> and you pull all these amazing references from all over the place to illustrate why this person is terrible at what they do. This is fucking cinematic already. Because otherwise we would never have been blessed with this wonderful comedy special, Burn the Boats. Now it's been six years since our man Joe released a stand-up special. The last one was back in 2018. Strange Times, which again is definitely one of the greats, as you can Fuck see here on this wall hell. that you can find inside Joe's Comedy Fuck Club. Him. To be fair, that's kind of... I don't know. What's more flagrant? What's more flagrant? Let me know in the stream chat. People who have a have their picture of themselves as their background image on their phone or people who have pictures of themselves in their house, like from a photo shoot, not like a family, not like a family portrait, but just like a picture of themselves from like a photo shoot, looking cute or something at home. What's more maniacal? What's more sadistic? What's more sociopathic? What's more psychotic? To have a picture of yourself as your background image on your phone, or to have a framed picture of yourself on the wall of your house somewhere? In my thinking, I think the framed picture of yourself on the wall is crazy. Like this, to have a picture of your own special on the wall of all these iconic specials is crazy. Because part of me would think you open this comedy club and all the specials on the wall are kind of things that inspired you to start comedy or inspired you to open a club in the first place. Having your own special up there is insane. Is insane. Honestly, it's insane. What are you guys saying? Um, both. Big up space guy, both. Um... It's like having a portrait of themselves, having yourself as a screensaver, psychotic, bro. Yeah, exactly. No, I know it is quite. Like, I'm just saying, there's two versions. There's a person that has a screensaver as themselves, or the one that has the framed picture in their house of themselves from like a photo shoot, looking cute, 
looking dapper, looking handsome. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> Young old vibes. I feel like you have a picture of you running on your wall. <laughs> Like you know when you do marathons and like they have someone take a picture of you. Like no 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 never ever ever. I would never do that. I would never ever do that. I I'm not I'm not that self absorbed. I am a little bit, but not that much. No way. The comedy mothership. It's been so long. It's hard to believe he took six years to write an hour of comedy, but you know Joe. He has to get in there and hammer away at these jokes. Finally honed like Damascus steel. <laughs> I'm always interested in the in the writing process. Yeah, why? What is yours? You just go, right? Like I can type, so I don't have to look at the keys, which is nice. Oh, wow. I don't type great, but I, I type okay. Enough. As you're writing each yeah. individual word, you're pausing in time. Yeah. And you're like, you're in a time lapse, and you get to consider each and every possible way you would say something from that word yeah. while you're writing that word. Yeah. And there's a physical task of doing that with your keys and your <laughs> fingers that makes you concentrate. Yes. Because it fires up your synapses and yeah. makes you think that you're doing this with your fingers. Mm. It's kind of exciting. Yeah. What's worse? What's worse? Knowing Rogan takes writing jokes that seriously and still shit at comedy or him just being bad because i think a part of me kind of feels sad because i believe him i think he's incredibly hard working incredibly driven and shit i believe him when he says he spends hours writing material thinking about how to like cut the fat from the joke all these like terms he uses like he legitimately makes it seem like he's on some Navy stills operation when he's fucking putting jokes together. I can believe he dedicates that amount of time to himself. He goes away, goes hiking, locks himself in a log cabin somewhere in the hills and just sits there writing and smoking weed all day. I can believe he does that. But it's just sad for me. I just feel sad for him that he spends all that time doing that, clearly, clearly passionate about it, clearly gives a fuck about stand-up, clearly is passionate about the craft and has watched all the greats and all this malarkey, can quote jokes from other specials and has been inspired by all the biggest comics. And then you see what he does on stage and it's like, wow, it doesn't actually matter if you spend all that time working that hard. You're just terrible. Yeah. You can't just shit out a bunch of jokes and expect them to be any good. Yeah. Joe is a man of quality, so six years it is. Will somebody please shoot me? It took Michelangelo four years to complete the painting of the Sistine Chapel ceiling. <laughs> And it's pretty good, I guess. But imagine if he had spent two more years. It's pretty good, I guess. <laughs> imagine if he spent two Honestly. The graveyard is smashing it. It's pretty good, I guess. <laughs> but it's no burn the boats. Years on it. Imagine how much better it could be. Guys, I've said it before and I'll say it again because nobody ever seems to fucking listen to me, but quality takes time. Like dry-aged ribeyes. Or a dram of that wonderful Laphroaig whiskey. If you have a triple digit IQ, you'll be able to wait patiently, knowing that despite the difficulty in waiting, the results will be worthwhile in the end. Now a lot has happened in the life of Joe Rogan over the past six years. It's been arguably the most dramatic six years of his life. Since 2019, he has found himself in some hot water many, many times. Troubling video sparking the uproar went viral over the weekend. Well, do you think he'd ever watch something like this? You, th you think you could watch something like this and laugh at himself? Or do you think he'd get annoyed about something like this and try and like, strike it down? Because I think it'd be really refreshing if he could watch something like this and laugh at how ridiculous he sounds sometimes, how he comes across, and have a semblance of like self-awareness and like, you know, just self-deprecating and not take it too seriously. I don't know. That would be so refreshing to see. But it's probably unlikely. It's probably unlikely. That would be so cool if that happened, wouldn't it? Like, oh my god i watched this video they fucking destroyed me man i get it i get like that'd be so good to see but these guys have no ability to like laugh at themselves like they like to laugh at the crowd they like to fuck around with you guys and the crowd with the shitty crowd work shit but when it comes to you taking the piss out of them they don't like it and and we should warn you it's difficult to watch and to help cope with the adversity he's had to face he's redesigned his entire oh yeah that floating head one was that floating head apology when he was saying sorry for the n-word to watch that's an iconic and video to help cope that floating head apology is that when he was saying sorry for saying nigger or is this the video where he was saying sorry for the taking the horse tranquilizer shit or something because he did he's, he's he's apologized quite a bit in the last five years isn't it 
there's been a lot of apologies, a lot of walkbacks. All that money he's accepted from Spotify, it came with a lot of strings, man. He made a lot of money, but he's had to apologize more in the last five years than he's ever done in his entire career. Cope with the adversity he's had to face. He's redesigned his entire personality, becoming a brand new guy, <laughs> which is commendable. Go to Texas, we're red, bitch! There you go. See, no, that's, that's but with this new guy that he's become, He's also attracted millions and millions of new fans thanks to his wonderful podcast. And apparently, despite it being Joe's justification for existing, a lot of these people aren't even aware that Joe does stand-up comedy. In the lead-up to this special, <laughs> Joe shared a few promotional posts advertising the event. Nothing. And a lot of the commenters, sorry, the haters, I should say, <laughs> well, they had a lot to say about the quality of Joe's comedy act. Best and uh, not so much comedian. many of the rest were just confused why this guy was suddenly doing a stand-up special out of nowhere, <laughs> which is pretty interesting. You hate to see it, but maybe it's just because he's been away so long. Uh, maybe Someone's right there in the comments, isn't it? I didn't notice it before, but he does wear the same thing in it, every special. <laughs> the blouse shirt things. I think this recent one, the shirt fit him a bit better. You know, the shirt fit him a little bit better. But he does wear exactly the same outfit in every special. <laughs> Just a different color shirt. Oh, it's like he buys them in multi packs, you know, in just different colors and shit. Hilarious guy. Maybe they just forgot. I mean, we haven't seen Michael Jordan dunk a basketball in over 20 years. And even with him, it's easy to forget how good he was. So I can understand forgetting how funny our king really is, but that's no excuse to be rude. Baby! I'm afraid some of this animosity was getting to Joe, who admits he is so fragile that he can't even watch his own specials. Which isn't exactly a great way to improve your routine, but what do I know? He looked incredibly <laughs> nervous and with Yeah, what do I know? Let's look at the gang. Gang, gang, gang. What do I know, gang? Big up the elephant graveyard. What do I know, gang? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out confidence as he promoted this thing on his podcast leading up to it. Okay. I have to announce, because uh, Netflix is making me announce this, that I have uh, a Netflix special that's live Saturday night. From... Oh, the way he even said it. Ugh. He sounded kind of scared and nervous. I have to announce it because Netflix is making me announce it. Jesus Christ, Rogan, man. At least pretend like you're ready. At least pretend like you're there. God damn it. They have to... <laughs> Netflix is making me announce it. <laughs> Netflix won't let me go. <laughs> <laughs> San Antonio. Oh, so it's gonna be live all over the world. I've seen your set. It's really funny. It's uh, it's tight now. Mm. It's uh, good. It's like I'm very happy with it. Oh, he says you're funny, and you say it's tight. It's like oh, you really should be saying yeah. Some of the best stuff I've ever done. I think I think I'm really on a different frequency of funny. Like no, it's tight. What <laughs> is it funny or not? How long has it been since you dropped the special? Six years. Wait, do seriously? Yeah, I was ready to do one in August of 2020. Then I just started changing a lot of bits and moving stuff around. And I'm like, I don't want to do one right now. Oh, so COVID didn't prevent him from putting the special out. He's the one that didn't want to put it out. So he actually purposely took long to tighten this set up. And that's what we saw. I thought COVID and just delays and opening the comedy club kind of, you know, made it delay. But he's actually saying he's the one that didn't want to put the special out earlier because he was trying to work on it some more. So the work on it some more is what we saw on Netflix. That's what we saw on Burn the Boats. That was his six years of editing. God damn. But not everyone was negative about it. Some comedy fans were thrilled and chomping at the bit to be part of a wonderful live comedy experience from the comfort of their very own homes. Thank you, Netflix, for all you've done for comedy. I have prepared for this probably more than anything I have, maybe in my life, but definitely in recent memory. I'm not going to lie. Probably more than observation Thank here. You, Net observation here. Observation here. If I'm a cash thing, I'm going to feel a little bit insecure. Andrew Schultz on the same comment, they left exactly the same comments. Four flame emojis next to Rogan announcing his comedy special thing, right? Andrew Schultz got 753 likes. Akash Shin's same comment got 90 likes. I'm going to feel a little bit self conscious. I'm going to feel a little bit insecure. How is he getting so many likes compared to mine? 
What the fuck is going on here? How? How, Sway? How? Netflix, for all you've done for comedy. <laughs> I have prepared for this probably more than anything I have, maybe in my life, but definitely in recent memory. Uh, I've been going at it hard. Okay, well, sounds like wow. Joe is ready. and I, I didn't know he was pushing it and talking about how much effort he put into this, to this level. And the comedy special that I saw had two good jokes in it. In the hour special that I watched, two good jokes. I am too, so let's prepare to laugh. Take notes, liberals. This is Wow, and there he is, wearing a very beautiful, <laughs> delicate, flowing mustard blouse. He looks gorgeous. Ah, and there's the stool. God, that's exciting to see. I hope he utilizes that stool tonight. He has to, right? Check off stool. stool. I've been living here for four years. I fucking love it. I love it here. Okay, well, right off the bat, he's still, uh, he does seem a little nervous still, and he's screaming at the top of his lungs. I want to sell kayaks! Now, I'm not sure if he's confused or what, but he's shouting full... <laughs> he's so bad. You know what's funny about Rogan? I don't think he's funny come from that voice. You know what I mean? Even if when he's being off the cuff funny, I don't think his most funny moments have come when he uses that kind of voice that he uses. That's the weird thing about it. Yeah, a, a big up Koyla. Yeah, R.I.P. Susan Wojcicki. Yes. R.I.P. Susan Wojcicki, former YouTube CEO. Um, I didn't know she was ill, so she was kept that private. She clearly didn't want people to know which probably explains why she stepped down from YouTube role anyway, because it seemed odd at the time. She randomly just stepped down and kind of disappeared from the limelight or disappeared from media in general. She didn't really give... I don't I didn't even think she even gave an interview about her, why she left or anything. She just kind of left. I think she had a role to play in who succeeded her, but she just kind of stepped away from the limelight. So I guess that was a reason. She was going through her health issues and probably wanted to spend some time with her family and try and see if she was able to kind of recover from it, but unfortunately not fucking tragic man only 50 i think as well only 50 or something like cancer is a fucking bitch honestly like one moment you're here next moment you're not like just wham so yeah r.i.p um susan wojcicki r.i.p susan wojcicki r.i.p susan wojcicki blast the same way he does when he's doing commentary for ufc events when he's surrounded by an arena full of thousands of screaming fans maybe he's been doing too much ufc not enough stand-up, and his wires got all bungled up there, and he forgot which gig he was at. Never moving. <laughs> the only, the only adjustment I've ever. Oh wait, okay, there he goes. It's Texas weed. Suddenly, it all clicked, and he remembered this is a comedy show. Yeah. The audience is quiet, and there's no need to shout the whole time. Great. <laughs> Texas weed is different. Ah, uh, yeah, that's better. Good job, Joe. You can do it. You got this. Tex that's such a good observation. Big up Henry Gray, that's such a good observation of that like recalibration of his voice. Like he almost realized in real time, oh shit, why am I screaming at them? <laughs> I've got the microphone, they can hear me. <laughs> that's an amazing observation. I didn't even pick that. Big up Henry Gray, that's amazing. Texas weed is grown on Texas soil. Now almost right off the bat, Joe goes into tackling the topic of weed. Now weed, if you don't know, is a serious <laughs> crime in Texas. <laughs> The land of the free. Exactly. If you get exactly. caught with that stuff, they literally lock you up in a prison yep. with scary criminal murder guys, mm -hmm. mutilators, violators, all those types. But lucky for Joe, he got around this issue by simply becoming friends with their wheelchair governor guy called Greg. What a lucky guy. So there's some advice for my fellow partakers down. <laughs> the wheelchair governor guy. Uh... <laughs> A wheelchair governor guy is fucking hilarious, man. Down in Texas, just get in with this guy, jiggle his flaccid dangler, and you'll get the green light to bun to your heart's content. Mm -hmm. It's actually really easy. So Joe is sticking to his tried and true handful of topics. He mentioned weed. And here he gets onto the topic of aliens again, one of Joe's favorite subjects. I'm very invested in aliens being real. If they're not, I'm gonna feel so fucking stupid. Yeah, Joe is definitely going to feel real stupid if aliens are proven to be fake. Say what you want about Joe, but when he's proven wrong, even though he might feel a bit dumb, he takes it in stride and learns from his mistakes. But the State of the Union was not live, and... Yes, it was. No. No, did you see that they found out that it wasn't? Someone zoomed in on his watch, and his watch was the wrong time. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, how could that even be? I don't know what they knew. 
how do you know what they knew? You just you, you get a feed. You know? I don't think all the Republicans would agree to it too. Who knows they're all what there. they knew? What? They're all there live while yeah. he's doing it? Let's see. I don't see anything. State of the Union wasn't live. It, I added watch. It I'm could not, be some troll shit. See anything about they that. got me. Yeah. Look at Biden's watch, incorrect time, State of the Union. Yeah, there is a fake image. They got me, these sons of bitches. It's just amazing how much stuff is fake. It's just <laughs> like that me. stuff. Like, who's doing that stuff and why are they doing that stuff? They could be, probably be putting up some of that misinformation themselves. Attaboy, Joe. How can anyone not like him? People go, if aliens are real, why don't they just land on the White House lawn? Oh, well, when you go fishing, do you check in with the president of the lake? Mm. What? Now, I hate to fact check already, but there is no president of the lake. There are fish and bugs and ducks and things, and there may even be a mayor of a nearby township, but no president. So this analogy is terrible, and I don't know, guys. I, exactly. This is, look, I, I've been trying to be positive about this thing, but there have already been several red flags that Joe's heart is not in this comedy thing anymore, and no, 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 no. Sorry, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna stay positive here, stay prepared to laugh. Continue. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> Holy shit, where have I seen that face before? Let me dig into the files here, I think I know. Oh my god, No it's way! I think no aliens way. look at us the same way we look at Waffle House fights. Now we all know Joe has never been inside a Waffle House, so how does he know about Waffle House fights? <laughs> <laughs> that is so true if joe ever did step into a waffle house you know if he if joe did actually if joe if joe if joe actually actually did step into a waffle house he wouldn't shut up about it you know he wouldn't shut up about it you know he would be talking about it to his blue in the face right he loves a bit of fucking repeating stories about meeting commoners and regular people and civilians and shit he wouldn't stop talking about it Big up Quayla. Um Elephant Graveyard giving it an honest try like AZ. Yeah, man. Like I went into it with the best intentions because part of me kinda wants to prove everyone wrong that keeps saying Rogan isn't funny. So I kind of was a had a vested interest in it, right? I had a dog in the race. But it took it didn't take that long but until I realized that I was mistaken and Rogan just isn't funny. And I just got annoyed <laughs> and frustrated. Oh, fucking hell. Six years to do this. Six fucking years. From social media, of course, Joe is a rabid user of social media, <coughs> especially Twitter. And despite being a detached millionaire who mostly hangs out with the retired Navy SEAL security guards he keeps <laughs> around him at all times, there are many, many accounts... <laughs> retired Navy SEAL security guards, yeah. It's like, does he hang around with anybody he doesn't pay? That's the, that's the one of the negatives of being super rich in it basically everyone he hangs around with he kind of pays them that must be so shit isn't it that must be so fucking shit uh, everyone around him is on salary <laughs> that's horrible counts joe follows that allow him to keep his finger on the pulse of the quote real world yeah. like these ones i call this genre of account poverty safari exactly, yeah. there are many of them that let you vicariously explore the things like the hoods safari. of detroit or the homeless camps <laughs> of la the problem with joe is that this is all he looks at mm -hmm. all the time and he has constructed inside his mind a very distorted model of the world around 100%, 100%. him which he never actually sees in real 100%. life it's a lot like plato's cave if you've got a triple digit IQ, you already know what that's about. But if not, Plato's cave is an allegory, look it up, for the way our brains interpret data from our senses and construct a model of reality that informs the way we think, feel, and behave. In the story, it's explained that we all resemble captives who are chained deep within a cavern and who do not yet realize that there is more to reality. <laughs> Yo, we're getting deep into the weeds, bro. Philosophy, huh? Philosophy, are you serious, bro? Elephant Graveyard going deep, 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 deep. Love it. Reality and the shadows they see against the wall. So Joe's social media feed is his cave, and the first evidence of that is seen here with this Waffle House remark. Okay. Now, before we look at this next clip, I just want to prepare you. You may be confused, but don't worry. 
President Joe Biden is not suddenly collaborating with Rogan on this special. This is actually an impression that Joe has been working on for five or six years, and he's finally ready to unveil it. Okay, let's Joe isn't known for doing good impressions, exactly, so yeah. this is very brave to try and do live here. Let's be nice. I got hairy legs. My uncle got eaten by a cannibal. Incredible. See, guys, six years. <laughs> Six years, six years. Well, with a few of his regular subjects out of the way, Joe... He is pretty bad at accents. I think the only good accent Joe does is like Alex Jones. He's got a really good Alex Jones accent. I think he does Joey Diaz pretty well, but that's it. He doesn't really have other good accents. But that was a pretty bad Joe Biden accent. I'm not going to lie. That was pretty fucking bad. Joe veers into a topic that's going to permeate a lot of this special. Ass play. I don't want to sound like a broken record as we've spoken before about Carl Jung and the shadow self, so just to make it quick. We all have an inner shadow self inside our psyches that... <laughs> quoting... Quoting Carl Jung. <laughs> quoting Jungian philosophy. <laughs> to describe Rogan's obsession with butt play is fucking insane. Elephant Graveyard is just too much, man. This is just, this is, this is crazy. <laughs> that contains all the hidden aspects of our personalities. The self's emotional blind spot. The part of you that your ego does not want to acknowledge. All the things we do not wish to be. But to become a fully actualized person, those aspects need to be assimilated somehow. And if not assimilated, the repressed shadow will find all sorts of ways to leak out subconsciously. And as you'll see in this bit, whether he wants to do this or not, Joe's obsession with ass play gets put front and center. So here we're about to see some clear shadow leakage as Joe graphically describes the unbridled pleasure of anal probing. Yes, I'm glad he said this because I noticed it. I did notice it when I was watching all the fucking specials, especially that first one. Where he has an entire skit where he's basically simulating fucking Brian Callen up the ass. Like, and it's very, very graphic, very detailed. It sounds like he took a lot of time to make. And it sounded like there was a lot of role play, even maybe in the studio. Maybe Rogan actually did go behind Brian and shit. He, he actually, it sounded like he enjoyed it. That's what I was saying. It sounded like somebody that clearly enjoyed what they were doing. So I was like, hey. This is a bit this is a bit wild, I'm not gonna lie. But someone that always proclaims that they aren't into dick stuff or gay shit and are incredibly straight, that seemed like a very, very gay act to me. But I could be wrong. So I'm glad to see Elephant Graveyard pick up on, you know, Rogan's uh you know, not so subtle signalling of his shadow self. Imagine if you have your greatest orgasm ever on an operating table on a spaceship. Oh Jesus! Make him just jizz all over himself. Just, oh, jizz! Oh, God! Greatest what? orgasm ever, he says. Well, that may be so, but Joe, you don't need to wrap that admission up inside a story about aliens. It's not a surprise, guys, if you've been studying Joe Rogan as long as I have. You'll remember the time he publicly opined on how great it would be to become a woman and get fucked by some guy. I know what? you well enough to know. You, oh, Joe yeah, Rogan, true. if there was a technology that could instantly turn you into a woman, yeah. You wouldn't hesitate to turn into I'd like a woman. to feel a dick inside me. Yeah, exactly. Whoa. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Me As a woman? Yeah. And I, I don't been... think it made me gay. What happens is you become a woman who actually feels the way a woman feels when she's attracted Signed. to a man and a guy with a dick, dick like a battering ram. Let me try He's just going to send it home. See what happens. And you can't wait. You want to feel him come inside your upper rib cavity. Like, I want to feel it. Uh, uh. Sign me up. The point yeah, but, is like... But, you Duncan seems to be really into it too. Duncan seems to want to watch it. He wants to watch whatever footage comes from this fucking experience. He'd love to see Rogan as a woman getting fucked by some dude. I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't. Rogan's not cute, really. <laughs> I think he looked kind of wild as a woman. But Duncan seems to be really into it. Duncan is really into it. He's really into the idea of watching um, fucking Rogan getting his back blown out as a woman. Wild. Wild, wild, wild. Some you know. men, the weakest among us, would be scared of that experience. Because Rogan's got a flat ass. 
he'd be a type of woman that's like square bodied, big fake tits, flat bum. There'd be nothing to watch there. Like, you know, that'd be a rough watch to watch Rogan as a woman getting smashed. That wouldn't be like, that wouldn't be enjoyable. That'd be a rough watch, you know? That square head with a wig on. Like, I don't know. No, thank you. <laughs> right. Well, they'd be scared that that experience weakens them and turns them into something that they, they, they dismiss. I would, I would like to feel what it's like to be pregnant. Really? Yeah. I wonder if, if amyl nitrate does that. Like, that's the reason why uh, gay guys like poppers. Mm -hmm. it's <laughs> the lady doth protest too much. Big up, Koyla. It's not gay if we live in this simulation. Yeah. It's like that episode of uh, Black Mirror, right? It's like that. Im it's like that. Im it's like that um, uh, episode of Black Mirror where the two guys uh, fuck each other in the game. And it's like an immersive game where you kind of like can feel shit. And they have female players and they end up fucking and shit. I think that's how it works, right? In the game. It's really weird. So they fuck each other in the game as girls. So it's like a lesbian thing, but they both do. I don't know. I don't know why that was a gay thing, but that was how they tried to spin it. So that's kind of what it's going to. I think there'll be a lot of dudes that would do that, though. I think there'd be a, a crazy amount of dudes that actually would do it. If that game was available, I think there's a there's probably a scary amount of dudes that actually would try it out just to see what I want. Just to, you know, just to have, just for the thrill of the game, you know? Just to feel something. Just to feel something. Because it, it oh, relaxes your asshole muscles. Is that true? Or you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's hmm. part of... It's like a feeling of euphoria and also relaxing your asshole muscles. Or how he enjoys engaging in oral sex with a penis from time to time. Yeah, Zach, I can suck my way. own dick if I wanted to. No, you can't. No, you can't. Super oh. flex. You can't. <laughs> Yo, I believe Rogan has sucked his own dick, 100%. He says, I could suck my own dick if I wanted to. He's definitely sucked his own dick. For sure. For sure. <laughs> it explains so much about Rogan. It really does explain so much about him, man. Uh, being a quailer, I played it. It's called Two Bud Lights. Yeah, Two Bug Lights and a Baggy, isn't it? That's what this game is called. It's fucking named after a street song or something. Two Bud Lights and a Baggy. Two Stellas and a Cheeky Bag. <laughs> two, two Stellas and a Cheeky Bump. <laughs> That's what the game is for. <laughs> Big up the streets. Oh. Yeah, it's no yes. use that far. You know I can. Okay, that's just some context for you as we examine <laughs> this next sequence. That's place. how they get come out of donkeys. Oof. Okay. <sighs> Unfortunately, now it sounds like the crowd's initial yeah, the excitement crowd. and enthusiasm is running <laughs> on fumes as we've got our first donkeys. real obvious awkward bomb of the night. The crowd goes completely <laughs> silent and Joe just stands there like a deer in headlights. But Joe I didn't notice this. I swear I didn't notice this. I didn't notice the bomb. I didn't notice that little bomb there. That's how they get come out of monkey, out of donkeys. Everyone like, what? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I swear to God, I enjoy doing this in real life. I enjoy being at like house parties or gatherings, especially at afters, and just dropping an absolute lead balloon of a joke and like clearing a room. There's nothing I love more than going to an afters and just bringing up some dicey topic or having some bizarre and very crazy hot take that just like sends everybody from the room out into toilets or into other rooms. I love that shit. I love clearing a room. I love it. And there's no better way than just dropping. That's how they get come out of donkeys. <laughs> and afters. Everyone's looking at me like, huh? <laughs> Joe manages to salvage it by stooping to the lowest form of conversation. Remember when? Yeah, big up Chris Mack. Big up Chris Mack. You know what, go on. That's such a good feeling. I swear to God, it's the best. Because there's usually people at like afters or like gatherings with friends and places where everyone's trying to like be the guy to like make everyone laugh or try to be the cool guy. that's lame that's e that's not easy but it's like that's played out who gives a fuck the actual challenge is to try to be <laughs> intentionally <laughs> combative annoying or just weird <laughs> and freaking everybody out <laughs> on purpose i fucking love that shit i swear to god it brings me so much pleasure or just going out of your way to be a contrarian and just doing the fucking you know 
<laughs> playing devil's advocate, but really standing ten toes down in it, right? Doubling down, tripling down. I fucking love it. I used to host Fear Factor. And, uh, <laughs> and oh, yeah. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, that's so hacky. That's now, so hacky. I don't know if this is from excitement and arousal or from nervousness and fear, likely some combination of both. Buckets of cum. But this is the moment Joe starts profusely sweating through the mustard blouse. Perhaps it's nerves from some subconscious realization that his shadow is about to take the wheel and squirt out a major leak here. Pay attention to this region here and watch how it develops throughout the show. And by the way, oh. Yeah, big up Super Jello. Tism jokes on my North Star. Yeah, I love dropping that sort of stuff. Like, you know, just outlandish stuff. Just say, I don't know. Just being like, yeah, um, what you call it? Mental health isn't real. Like, just do push ups. Like, you know, that sort of shit. <laughs> If you're depressed, go on a run. You know that sort of stuff. <laughs> you get out of life what you put in. <laughs> if you're not getting what you want out of life, you need to work harder. <laughs> life is a meritocracy. <laughs> Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Like, loads of that stuff, bro. Race politics. Like, honestly, I get into it. I go fucking hard in the paint. I go hard in the fucking paint. <laughs> oh man, look at that stool behind him just teasing us back there. Stop teasing us, Joe. He knows how to build suspense, that's for sure. I remember once, I remember one year when I went to Berlin. I remember one year when I went to Berlin. Honestly, if you've been, you know. And I went to an afters after going clubbing and spending fucking 17 hours outside and consuming every fucking drug out in the sun and drinking a bunch, hanging out with some cool people. We go back to their cool apartment and they start talking about gentrification. And I cleared a room by arguing about the pros of gentrification. <laughs> and I used <laughs> the Olympic Games in London as an example of gentrification done correctly. <laughs> And how it boosted the local economy, brought back jobs. <laughs> Honestly, I cleared the room in record time. I was advocating for landlords. <laughs> and building developers and stuff. Ah, oh, I fucking, that was a legendary clearing the room moment. I love that. I love that. Ah, oh, man, we are only five minutes into this thing and I am just dying for some stool work. We'll have to settle for some ass work for now, I guess. You take a cattle prod and you stick it up the donkey's ass and you shock his prostate and they just bust. And then I was like, what does that feel like? What if it's your favorite thing? Like, There's that leakage. You can't even tell anybody. It's too bad for Joe. He's too old and his brain is far too calcified to become a new guy <laughs> in this aspect of his life. It's too deeply rooted. <laughs> that's so true <laughs> that's true true he's too old this is this is him this is who he is that's so true but someone should tell joe that it's okay to just enjoy that stuff <laughs> it's no big deal anymore joe Ask nah that's great editing i'm sorry that's great editing i'm sorry that's a fucking genius editing to have the next clip be <laughs> joe out in the wilderness with some guy <laughs> And looking at him like he's a fucking cutie. Should tell Joe that it's okay to just enjoy that stuff. <laughs> nah, Elephant Graveyard. That's fucking genius level editing. That is genius editing. Genius fucking editing. <laughs> Yo, bro. <laughs> he wants to definitely check his prostate, innit? Fucking hell, Joe. Look at that glance. It's no big deal anymore, Joe. Ass play has gone mainstream. Don't worry about it. Should we keep hammering? Hmm? Should we keep hammering? Keep hammering? What's that? But instead he settles for keeping it a secret. While... When you think, when you think your bros on the same time you're on. <laughs> he wants to fuck, but his bros not really down. Oh. Don't worry about it. Should we keep hammering? Hmm? What? Should we keep hammering? Hammer. What's that? <laughs> but instead he settles for keeping it a secret <laughs> while releasing a little shadow pressure by revealing his deepest desires live on Netflix for millions of people under the guise of donkeys and aliens. It works for now, but it's not a viable long-term strategy. Now, and I can't believe this, but he's going to bail on his set, and we know he's bailing because Joe has said for years that once he's done a joke on a special, he retires it and never does it again. Yep. So here he's really starting to bomb. 
and is so terrified that he's going to break his own code and fall back into some tried and true material. Oh, he is going to Mencia no. himself here and regurgitate a bit from his 2009 special, Talking Monkeys in Space. Really? And I'm watching porn on the computer. My girlfriend just opens up the door. You did it while I'm at home. She was really sad about that. And I didn't have the heart to tell her, I do it while you're sleeping right next to me. She goes, I can't believe you did it while I'm at home. And I'm like, I do it while you're sleeping right next to me. Oh man, that's a Oh no. Rogan broke the cardinal Rogan rule. Never, never, never reheat an old dish. Never reuse old bits. He always talks about writing material. As soon as you do a special, you just dash it out the window. You burn it. You eviscerate it. You say to your dragon, Dracarys, on your notepad. You never fucking use it again. And Rogan, going back on his word. Rogan disappointing the comedy gods. No. It's a finely aged 15 year old classic bit. I'm a little surprised that Rogan broke his code here, but our behavior can change dramatically when faced with an existential crisis exactly. like bombing this bad. Exactly. For example, exactly. when people are in the midst of drowning and someone jumps in to save them, the drowner often ends up inadvertently exactly. and tragically yeah. murdering their rescuer amid the struggle to save themselves. Uh -huh. You do what you gotta do, and I guess when you bomb hard enough, you do what you gotta do to survive too. But unfortunately, that can often be self-defeating. Here's the thing about jerking off. Everybody does it, but if you get caught, you're a fucking loser. Uh-oh, this actually sounds like a cope. I don't know if I ever told you guys this, but I grew up without an uncle, and that has gifted me with the ability to detect copes. <laughs> and this has to be a cope. This is way too personal. You're a fucking loser. And by the way, not to nitpick, but have you noticed that this is Joe's new default face? Yeah. Does this look like the face of somebody who's enjoying what they're doing? To me, this face confirms that his heart is not in this anymore. And I just don't get it. Like, why is he still trying to do stand-up? What's the point? I can't keep doing this! And man, the sweat stain is evolving rapidly. He's very nervous. And judging by the way he can't stop screaming, he's likely hopped up on stimulants and booze. Ooh! Do you think, do you think Rogan abuses Adderall the same way that Brendan does and stuff? It makes sense though, right? There's no way Brendan does does Adderall just by himself in it he definitely something that he probably got introduced to by other comedians high level people higher level operators entrepreneurs you know that sort of nonsense right and they all think they're fucking entrepreneurs they all think they're fucking running corporations they all think they're fucking you know magnates and fucking whatever right they think they're fucking big business for people that need to have their mental faculties running on full fucking blast all the fucking time so it wouldn't surprise me someone like a Rogan got Brendan into fucking Adderall in the first place, but that makes, hmm, that makes a lot of sense. Joe forgot to mention that also during COVID, he became a bloated alcoholic. Alcohol is somehow another better than Joe? Oh, jokes. God damn it. I'm sorry. I, I got to stay positive. Joe, you're doing great. <laughs> is it? A <laughs> Joe then goes into a little story about going through airport security high on mushrooms and how wacky that was before swiftly pivoting right into his other passion, the what trans. Men get pregnant. I'm willing to say pregnant men. If it just, I just don't think it's a good, I think you need extra words. What? Maybe we should use extra words. Oh no, there's that silence again. Hearing more and more of that as the audience grows weary. Trans women are women, how about most? <laughs> how about almost all? You gotta leave room for crazy. Just jokes, folks. You know when they put this line in the trailer for this thing, I thought he must have said something truly edgy, but now I'm seeing it as actually a massive cope uttered during a major bombing. Just jokes, folks. No one's getting hurt. Notice that sniff there? That is one. Wow. I honestly didn't realize all of these moments of bombing. I swear I don't. I don't think I did. I'm going to I'm going to actually make the edit of my reaction from the fucking Patreon and just clip all the bits where I kind of pause and put it together. I'm not just sure if I noticed the bombs. That is so true. He was actually bombing quite a lot in it during the live set. Fuck. <laughs> he bombed quite a lot. <laughs> you think about it. <laughs> there were loads of moments where the crowd was completely quiet. Oh my God, man. Brendan's got to get back into stand up. If Brendan doesn't get encouraged or doesn't get motivated or inspired to stand up now, he'll never do it. Because if Rogan make, can make a living being a stand up comedian, so can Brendan. He just needs to get over the fact that he might not sell tickets as much as Rogan. 
and all this shit. He might not go on world tours. He might not go on arena tours. Just he can definitely make a decent amount of money if he wanted to. He's just got to stick with it because he's more than able to be funnier than Rogan if he wanted to. Just got to try a bit, you know, try a bit harder, be a little bit more, um, have the ability to be maybe, have the ability to self-edit, have the ability to be kind of harsh in your comedy and shit, maybe get some help or whatever. But I think Brendan has the ability to be funnier than Rogan if he tried, honestly, because there's not much to, there's not much to kind of fight against here. Rogan's pretty shit. One of Joe's tells, he does it on the podcast all the time. It's a nervous tick that comes out when he feels awkward about something embarrassing, he just said. We all have our tells and ticks, guys. Mine used to be that I'd look to the side. But I got over it and am back on the straight and narrow. You disrespectful motherfucker. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Yes, he's approaching the stool. Here we go. Yes. Now is his chance to win him back. No, uh, damn it. Just another tease. And by the way, why didn't Joe film this in his comedy spaceship? That's too bad. I'm surprised he wouldn't want to give the place some easy advertising. Joe is normally very prolific with his advertising work. Off yeah, I'm very surprised by it. Oh my god, I'm so glad Elephant Graveyard brought up the point about the McDonald's. I swear to god I made the same point on my Patreon. I swear to god I did. The McDonald's thing is so bizarre to me. I would love to know why he does this this way. I'm sure there's a legal reason behind it. I'm sure it's legit and it's okay. But the way Rogan subtly mark subtly fucking advertises for mcdonald's is so bizarre there'll be a random episode yeah i'm, I'm kind of hungry i kind of want McDonald's. you want to get mcdonald's and then you'd be like fucking shilling fucking you know fillet fillet of fishes and shit and then randomly the you know the fucking order will arrive and they'll have the bags and put it on the table and i was like what the fuck is this like why are we just like what is this like non-ad ad for mcdonald's all about he does it all the time, so I wonder if this is like a if that, those are like one off deals that he gets. If they're things that he can not keep, if they're things he's not allowed to declare if he wants to, or if he's just actually liking McDonald's. Generally, I don't think so. I think they are ads, but he does them quite often, and people don't talk about them enough because I think they're so bizarre. They're legitimately the most bizarrest thing ever. Often able to squeeze several dozen ads into one podcast episode. I opened up a comedy club in Austin, Texas. Oh, a year and a half. I knew it. There's the ad. Yeah, there's the ad. <laughs> but did you catch the sniff? Thank you very much. I guess he's a little ashamed to be doing this, but Joe is the king of slipping ads in everywhere, sometimes without you even noticing. And here he goes shamelessly promoting his club, disguising it as a joke. I opened up a comedy club in Austin, Texas a year and a half ago. This is a comedy pop-up ad. It's spam. It wasn't necessary, just a real-life pop-up ad. Suddenly, every man in a dress is stunning and brave. Okay, great. I was worried he wasn't going to... It's also kind of wild to announce that during your comedy special and to look for an applause break. Like, I opened a comedy club. Okay, great for you. Why is that a joke? Why is that funny? Why should that be something that should be applaud? Like, you know, like, I don't care. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's a weird thing to include. So maybe that's why he did that tell of, like, sniffing. Because he felt like a bit of a hack. He felt like a hack there. He kind of betrayed his um his tutelage and his learnings and his you know the icons that came before him would have never done that. Like what? Like <laughs> what's this got to do with the joke? Trying to get back to the trans. Oh, the trans. You can walk through the women's locker room with a hard cock, and anybody who complains is a Nazi. Seriously though, these aren't really jokes. This is all just his regular podcast banter he's been doing for the yep, past five yep, years. Yep, yep, just yep, yelled on yep, a stage yep. in front of an audience. And the bombs are piling up, that sweat stain is growing, and it is a sad thing. I'm sorry guys, I tried to be positive, but there is such a thing as toxic positivity. And I gotta say, this special is terrible and beyond salvaging. Possib yeah, big up Chris Mack, I've noticed it, I've noticed, it seems as if Rogan has several of those indirect sponsorships. Yeah, exactly, that's a good word for it, Chris Mack, indirect, yeah. Um, th like there was some convoluted back stretcher machine he raved about for a while different than an inversion table yeah exactly great fucking is there's a few of them so i'm not too sure if those things are like whether whether he has like um whether it's a thing where like they don't maybe pay you directly but maybe they give you like a i don't know like credit or something or maybe they give you like a free one to test out so you don't really need to say it's an ad i don't know there's some loophole probably because i'm sure he's legally he kind of keeps all that stuff on the up and up because he knows people will probably come after him but i don't know i find those ads so bizarre because there's clearly an ad clearly they're an ad like he does it a lot i think there's one that he did um 
I think it was for like an application. Maybe it was like a VPN thing. He was talking to somebody and he just kept going on and on about this particular VPN thing. And he wouldn't stop talking about it. Like, And he was acting like he was just like endorsing it because it was really good. But it was actually an ad. But it wasn't an ad, you know? Like, he does it quite a lot, man. He, like, there's one thing about Rogan. He's going to get his fucking money. <laughs> you know what I mean? He doesn't play. Career ending. You can't just put lipstick on. Now you can shit in the women's room. Like, oh my God. All of a sudden, it's a hate rally. Yeah, actually, it kind of is. Doesn't help that this guy looks exactly like Mussolini. <laughs> Rogan looking like Mussolini, honestly. Um, Elephant and Gravy are just showing off now. He's showing off. He's showing off. He's showing off. <laughs> it's just like I paid attention in class, you know. He's showing off now. Look, I know history. <laughs> I know philosophy. Look at what I can go like that's a fucking reference. That's a poor and a half. Rogan looks like Mussolini is so brilliant. <laughs> I'm not prejudiced. I think it's China. I think, I think they got us with TikTok. Craziest thing is they make our phones. That's we're suppo that's supposed to be our enemy, and they make our phones. Do you know how dumb that is? Someone needs to dub that in it. Someone needs to dub these Mussolini speeches with the Rogan bits. I swear to God, they probably won't look out of place. Someone needs to dub these with Rogan bits and put them on TikTok and let them go viral. That'd be fucking brilliant. I just want to say, honestly, I admire what they've done. And maybe do an AI. Maybe there's a way you could do an AI Rogan voice with an Italian accent. <sighs> Imagine that. Italian Rogan. <laughs> Italian accent Rogan. <laughs> that would be so good. Done. A lot of people miss this, but the Joe Rogan Spotify deal was in part financed by the Chinese Communist Party. Spotify what? is owned in part by Tencent, whose CEO, Pony Ma, has openly vowed to uphold the goals and desires of the CCP. So it's odd that Joe would comp- <laughs> That is so good. I love that shit. I love that. ...plain about this TikTok China stuff because he is most likely, whether he realizes it or not, a weapon of propaganda you- Joe Rogan is an agent of Timu. Joe Rogan is an, e an, is an, is an agent of Timu. Joe Rogan is an agent of Timu. Who would have guessed? Used by the Chinese government to sow chaos in America. All you got to do is follow the money. That's the one good thing I learned from Joe's podcast. And now something starts to happen that, and I can't believe I'm even saying this, but Joe actually goes full Brendan Schaub with this wonderful Chinese voice he does here. Oh, no! Look, there's Harry! Mr. Schaub, after you numb your lip, you need many, many stitches. <laughs> This be worse pain in your life. life. With all his big Guaranteed. criticisms about our infrastructure. Well, that is rough, but at least he's not straight up copying Brendan's jokes, right? My life would be so much easier if I was just gay as shit. I wish I was gay. So good. It looks way easier. We'd like play video games all day. We'd work out. At night, we'd fuck each other. You're hanging out with only guys. No one can get pregnant. <laughs> Honestly, Brendan, please come back to stand up. R Brendan, stand up needs you. Brendan, wherever you are, if you're hearing my voice, come back to stand up comedy. We need you, bro. Stand up needs you. You're just as good, if not better, than Rogan. Come back to stand up. We need another special. We need another special. We need car. We need a special called Car Guy, or Gearhead, right? Or Baseball Dad. We need one of those specials. Please come back. That is a low that is so low where I never expected Joe to go. Stealing from Brendan Schaub. My <laughs> God, if that is not the death knell of a comedy career, then I don't know what is. Brendan Schaub quit comedy after releasing that special, and it only stands to reason that if Joe is stealing from it, then he ought to do the same. Hey, well, cop, well, Ugh, he just won't stop screaming. Sports. This joke doesn't need to be yelled. If everything is yelled, then you can't emphasize anything. Exactly. So this whole thing just kind of becomes white noise. It all just flows and blends together meaninglessly. It's stimulating but meaningless. Which is basically what his podcast is. A screensaver for the brains of failed warehouse forklift operators. Bars. 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 Fucking bars. We have to rewind that back. I feel kind of... I feel kind of personally offended. I feel kind of attacked. Because I still fucking watch and listen to Joe Rogan. But this is a great way to describe Rogan. Honestly. Fucking bars are left on Graveyard. Wow, man. I feel attacked. 
I feel seen and I feel attacked. Stop screaming. Sports. This joke doesn't need to be yelled. If everything is yelled, then you can't emphasize anything. So this whole thing just kind of becomes white noise. It all just flows and blends together meaninglessly. It's stimulating but meaningless, which is basically what his podcast is, a screensaver for the brains of failed warehouse forklift operators. Sat at Yo, big up the people in the warehouse, big up the picker packers. Like, I honestly, the amount of hours that I spent listening to Rogan, working in warehouses and shit, doing crazy night shifts and stuff and having it in my headphones, having it playing aloud in the place that I'm at and shit, just in general. Yo, yo, I feel attacked and I feel seen. I feel seen and I feel attacked. Big up Jordan Ray in the chat. Big up Jordan Ray. Big up Super Jello. Big up Z. Yeah, yeah. Big up Mr. Still Your Girl. Yeah, yeah. You know what, Guan. At home, chewing on oxys and collecting pogey. All right, what else did Danny Benito say here? If you're getting your vaccine advice from me. Oh, great. Is that really my fault? Next, he goes into his routine of, I'm just a shithead comedian. Don't yeah, take me seriously. Exactly, exactly. I'm a professional shit talker, okay? Don't take my advice. This special is just PR now. This is not comedy. He knows nobody normal listens to his show anymore, so he can't reach them on his podcast. But normies watch Netflix, and a lot of them are going to be checking out what that guy whose podcast they can't believe they used to listen to and have to try and remember to whom they admitted listening to it and cringe with pure embarrassment about that. They, yeah, they want to see what that guy's up to. So this is Joe's chance to get some good damage control in. They tried to use that quote as proof that I'm homophobic. First of all, it's not true, but if he's literally just reenacting one of his many Instagram apology soliloquies. And it is just so fucking tedious to listen to. Really? He gets into his famous N word controversy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sorry to say, he's still doing that propaganda where he tries to convince everyone that he only said it when quoting other people saying it, which obviously is a lie. Here's a clip from the first ever Joe Rogan podcast. Once, once I get the internet to do it, I'll make it, I'll make it HD so you can see how ugly I am. Like, that is ugly. <laughs> they forgot to delete that one during Spotify's extensive operation. <laughs> In full 4K. An N-word cleanup. Yeah, nobody gives a fuck about context. So, I'm not racist, but if I was going to quote... Oh, Joe, you should have just let this one go. This PR is embarrassing. I'm not a racist. That's what's so insane about this. I thought everybody would understand. Here's the thing about these words, you can't say them. Damn, six years of honing this material and he's got to pad the back half of the special with PR. Oh, that's bad. But he still doesn't stray too far from the gay stuff, as that shadow continues to seep out. I love gay men. Joe's shadow is now in total control and is just leaking all over the place. And now, with the shadow in control here, he's going to steal another joke, this time from Bill Burr. You when you're in your car, what? The There's a Bill Burr joke so stolen here. I didn't know that. I turns green, but the scooters keep coming, and you just want to go to jail! Yeah, I have a lot of fucked up thoughts, man. I do. You ever drive down the street and see like 30 people up on a sidewalk, and you just think... <laughs> now that's at least two stolen jokes in this special, so that's bad. And this is the guy who got famous for calling out Carlos Mencia for stealing jokes. If someone steals a riff from a song, that shit's in the news constantly. Yeah. Motherfuckers steal shit and make it on you HBO, it Netflix. Put it on television. Not only did he steal material from Brendan Schaub, but he really just became the new Mencia tonight. I can't believe it. Talk about full circle. The shit hero's journey. So who is going to step up and be the new Joe Rogan to the new Carlos Mencia? I nominate Joe List. Come on, Joe, stand up for what? comedy. Go after Joe Rogan aggressively, please. I send my wife pictures of Why was there a random <laughs> insertion of Joe List? Why would Joe Joe List is the most like non non confrontational, meek type of dude, man. He was really in his own head the first time. Bless him, because I like to do the stories, but he was super in his own head when he did Rogan for the first time. Super nervous, clearly. Um, yeah, <laughs> he's not gonna confront. <laughs> Imagine Joe List confronting Rogan and calling him out on stage. That would be fucking brilliant. He's funny enough. He'd probably make it funny, but I don't think he's into, like, you know, calling people out like that. He'd probably would let it slide. This is a, please, Joe, please, we don't need to know this. And as his deepest secrets are spilling out against his will, Joe is fully lactating now, Jesus leaking both Christ. psychically and physically. Fully lactating. Hey, Antonio, I love you to death. Thank you very much. And now it's all over. It's finally done. Six years. Six years. Exactly. And 
They really dipped into the budget for this closing credits music, which sounds like it's ripped straight from the Ken Griffey Jr. game for Super Nintendo. Well, I guess if I had one sentence that could sum this thing up, it'd be... I hate dumb people that are confident, you know? Oh. Try again? I hate dumb people that are wrong and confident. And now that that's done, every comic on every podcast is going to spend the next six months raving about how Joe murdered and killed and massacred and chopped up all the bodies into little tiny chunks, threw them in the Austin River, whatever that's called. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Yeah. Dude, I like it because the, him saying the N-word, so funny. So funny. It said the N-word? Oh, it's so good. It was so good, of man. Of course, good. of course. It's good. It's so good? Yeah. And, the, and then he was talking about the word retard. They'll kiss the ring for that podcast invite, and the cycle of comedy shit will go on and on and on. But, like we've discussed... Rogan probably would want better people to be kissing his ring. He'd want more people to be sucking him off. He'd want better people, right? But the people that he wants to suck them him off are very selfish in a way, even though they use him a lot. So they wouldn't do it just because they wouldn't feel, you know, authentic or they wouldn't feel, you know, like they're doing themselves a they would feel like they're doing themselves a disservice. But the people who will openly go and run defense for him are Brendan and Brian, but he can't really use them for anything, right? They're kinda of useless to him. Especially Brian. Just here before, everything has its cycle. Joe has completely run out of ideas and his mind is ruined by social media. It can happen, it can. Joe has never been very good at comedy, but somehow he gets to be the number one guy, the big gatekeeper. He's our era's Johnny Carson, and getting the invite to Joe's podcast is the new bringing you over to the couch or whatever. But at least Johnny Carson didn't think he was a fucking stand-up comedian. That's a wild thing, isn't it? He has made himself into the gatekeeper of stand-up. He has made himself into the de facto shot caller, king maker. But he's terrible at it himself. What right does he have to tell anybody that they're good or bad? Like, you're terrible. Objectively terrible. Like, some of those jokes, you wouldn't laugh at it if you saw them on Kill Tony. If he got 60 seconds on Kill Tony, he would probably fall flat on his face. But, you know, in another universe where you've got the best podcast in the world, you are successful, which obviously is a lesson in there in that celebrity is way more important than talent or ability to do something get yourself some fame get yourself some attention and you can kind of do what you want you can kind of write your own ticket really you can kind of become a chef even if you can't cook you know you can run a business even though you're fucking in crazy amounts of debt and you've never you know known how to fucking run a fucking fruit stand let alone an actual fucking business business as long as you've got some clout and some fame and some whatever behind you you can do what the hell you want in this world really can this special will go down as Joe's last. He's like 60 or 70 years old, and it's clear that his heart isn't in it anymore. This thing was just a greatest hits montage of the worst era of this guy. Yeah, I've, I've wondered that myself, Z. I've wondered that myself. You, couldn't he just hire writers and learn from them and be open about it? This is embarrassing. I've always wondered that. Like, Why is it so frowned upon in comedy to not like use writers, especially if you're like a touring comedian? And you're very popular and stuff. I don't know. Put on a fun show for your friend, for your fans, or in your, you know, whatever people that follow you, and just hire some help to just tighten up some of your jokes. Maybe add new material, or just tighten up your set so that when you perform every night, you just perform the hits. Because I think that's how, that's what Bobby Lee does. I think Bobby Lee just gets on stage and performs his greatest hits everywhere he goes. But he just doesn't record it because if he recorded it, that mean he have to, you know, have some new greatest hits. But he knows stuff that works. He knows stuff that works in a certain combination and he just gets on stage and bangs it out. You know, if you see him the first time, you love it. If you see him the fifth time, you're probably going to love it anyway to hear him kind of repeat that same song, especially if it's your favorite song. So I see why that's a good approach to go down. Guy's podcast condensed into an hour. Did you just assume my gender? Every grade has their final moments. And sometimes we don't even realize it's a final moment until it's already passed us by. Assume my Wayne Gretzky had his final goal, his final shift. Michael Jordan, his final dunk. Elvis, his final song. Yeah, big up Keith T. He thinks he's funny. He's always talking about his... Pro yeah, that's a, that's a probably the reason why he would never get a writer or never get writers because he generally thinks he's absolutely funny. And you remember, a lot of these guys don't do it anymore. I think The Machine... I think The Machine movie 
and I think some of your mum's house things kind of killed it and that hype but do you remember there was a period in time where a lot of these comedians would be talking about how they could write better SNL material how they were funnier than most people that were putting together like comedy series and they could write a better pilot they could put together a better script do you remember it almost felt like these podcasters were getting really famous and they took they kind of confused their podcast fame for like fame and notoriety and regard within like the normie mainstream media public type of thing and they just assumed that they knew what was funny they knew how to kind of get it out there and all they needed was just a chance or an opportunity or someone just to step aside and then they finally got given their opportunities you know they finally got to produce and do their own thing direct it all that shit and that shit went straight to fucking cinema so that's why maybe a lot of these guys don't really talk too much about that anymore you don't really hear a lot of these comedians really let their nuts hang and say yeah i'm gonna take over nbc i'm gonna be ahead of this because they know they know that's is a thankful fucking job it's a thankless job actually in reality thankless job um big up a size but what would make them the right not sorry big up a size disease but that would make them no so that would make the writers one of the 500 and they can only be five yeah true very good point very very good point you can't really get the writers involved because then you can, yeah, yeah 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 i know i know i know the last time you ever pick up your son your final summer sunset and joe rogan this is brilliant his final stool hump <laughs> gotta go back to 2016 we didn't even realize it at the time but we were witnessing joe's final stool fucking gotta appreciate every moment wow 2016 so that guy from um that guy from uh what's it thing that guy from that show i forgot his name uh he actually shamed brent rogan out of using stools who's that dude you know that actor that i'm thinking about um big dude and he was he's in that fucking series with that guy with larry david he's in he's in the larry david series what's the larry david series called remember he kind of shamed rogan out of stools out of stool fucking he kind of gave rogan a bit of a dressing down like kind of mocked him a little bit kind of said it was hack essentially i think that's the guy that made rogan stop stool fucking you know i swear to god i think he's the one that's responsible for getting on camera or getting on the pod and be like yeah people that do that is super super hacky he really fucking went in on them i, I swear to god let me see if i can find the clip that i think his name is yeah that's it that's it that's it jeff garland that's the one yeah that's the one that's the one i actually have it here actually big up jeff garland Big up Blood Clark Jeff Garland. Yes, big up Jeff Garland. I actually got the clip here, actually. Let me see if I can get this up for you. Bear me one second, though. Big up Jeff fucking Garland. He actually said this. Where is it? There we go. There we go. What's it called? Um, oh, okay. The actual, I've got the actual name of it here as well. And all sorts. So big up Blood Clark Jeff Garland. Bear me one second on here. Bear me one second. Dune Secunda. Where is it? Not that, not this, not that, not this, there we go. Big up Jeff Garland. Push, 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 push. Um, where is it? Yes, that's the one. Fine. Yeah, he did say, yeah, he said, yeah, Legion of Skanks is a dumb name, yeah. He came in hard. Fine Arts of Stool Humping. I think that's what the video is called. It's on YouTube. Somebody uploaded this a while back. So this should be the one. So Jeff Garland went in on Rogan's ability to fucking stool hump. So this is the video. Big up Jeff Garland. I think he's responsible. He might be responsible for making Rogan not stool hump as much as he used to in the past. Let's see if I can get this up. Bear with me a second. Bear with me a second. If you like the stream, make sure you like the stream down below. Get on Help up. Get on up. No. Get and by the way, when you see someone moving around like that on stage, I will bet you every penny I have they're not funny. Corner on the couch. Oh, fuck. Is that the equivalent Ugh. of a guy stool fucker? There's not a lot Char of women. Shah has do kind of that, an though. elitist approach to comedy. It's quite interesting. He likes bars. He says he likes jokes. He doesn't like stool oh, fucking. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. Let's go back to the beginning one more time. Let's go back to the beginning one more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. What up? Get on up. No. And by the way, when you see someone moving around like that on stage, I will bet you every penny I have they're not funny. Stuff her in 
the corner of the couch. Oh, fuck. Fuck. Is that the equivalent uh. of a guy stool fucker? There's not a lot Char- of women. Char- that has can kind do of that, an though. elitist approach to comedy. It's quite interesting. He likes bars. Him. He says he likes jokes. He doesn't like stool fucking. Mm. Oh, how does this work? <laughs> when he comes, his whole body just erupts. Anytime I saw someone miming, having sex, you know, pumping air, yeah. I would just go, not funny. No. Exactly. It was just like, it was a sign of like... But what if there's a bit where you have to mime pumping pumping air? <laughs> Still fucking, if it's the right bit, can be funny. Really? But it has to be the right... It has to be... A real comic with a real reason to fuck that stool. There has to be something to it. Why do you do that? It looks dumb, all right? This is just being gay. That's all. <laughs> Ass in the air. That's it. There's gotta be a bit. Pumping bro. air? Yeah, but you mean like there's gotta be screwing pumping? Some, yeah, some bits. What? But but who doesn't know what that, that looks like? Why do you need to pump? Maybe exactly. there's a reason. It's gotta unless, be a something. Unless like you're imitating <laughs> someone having a heart attack pumping. It looks fucking stupid. <laughs> and most of the move around people are pushing it, just oversell shit by I see what you're physicalizing saying. what should be just funny the way you say it. Mm-hmm. Fucking pencil exactly. right there. <laughs> Bitch. <gasps> yeah, big up Koila. I don't even like how he calls things bits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. He actually is passionate. He actually cares about the craft. He clearly spends time writing. He's always on stage. He legitimately opened his own comedy club. He's probably losing money on that shit. He just opened it just so he can perform somewhere anytime that he wants. And still, the level of stand-up we get is what we got saw on Burn the Boats. <sighs> That's got to fucking hurt, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to think if Eddie fucked a stool. I imagine no, nobody fucking no stool, bro. See, I like Eddie. I like Richard. I like Chris yeah. Rock. Bless you. I like Chappelle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want. I like people that have something to say. All that stool fucking is like, eh. <laughs> I would Good never job. disrespect the craft like that. Well, you wouldn't have to disrespect it. You would just have to want to do it and then try it. <laughs> if the content is about your physical. Being as rich as Rogan is, honestly, and doing stand-up of this level is just crazy, isn't it? But maybe it shows he's actually in love with it for real, for real, because he's made so much money. I think he's probably definitely... He's, there's no way he's made more money from stand-up than he's made from, from podcasting. He's definitely made more money from podcasting, you know, all time, across the years he's done it, than stand-up. I just can't imagine, like, being that bad at something and then actively pursuing it for that long. Like, actually... When you've got other money making avenues and opportunities that you're far better at. Like, he's a far better podcaster than you as a stand-up comedian. But he just will not let go of the stand-up comedy shit. And he just refuses to get funny. He refuses to improve. Like, it's like, bro, like, please, just get better. At least make it worth our while to watch. Cality? Right. That's not dancing. Right, right, right. Dancing's when you, when you put like English, like when you, when you're doing this to accentuate what yes. you're saying. It's like screw that. We don't need that. One more cocktail. One more cocktail. I'm not that funny, man. I need some help. Ah! Man, Thank you, Shaw yeah. too, man. Shout out to Brendan Shaw. Um, I really do. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Shout out to Brendan Shaw. It's fucking hilarious. Let's go back. Let's go back to the burner book. Thing is finishes. Moment. Like it's the last, guys. He didn't mount that thing once during this special. So disappointing. You gotta play the hits, Joe, come on. And now he's this sad Charles Foster Kane figure. All the money in the world and never satisfied. All his decent friends scared away. The only friends he has left just kiss his ass and tell him he's amazing. That's the only explanation for him thinking this was his greatest set of all time leading up to this live stream. No real friend would allow Joe to gringo poppy himself. Now this Netflix thing is getting panned by just about everyone. And despite Joe insisting that he doesn't read comments, it's obvious that he does. And the feedback from this thing is going to wound him deeply. And the weird thing is, he didn't even need to do this. He's got more money than he knows what to do with. He just did this because he still wants people to think he's funny. This guy literally cries when he talks about becoming a stand-up and getting passed at the comedy store. He wants to be a comic so bad, and he's just getting torn apart out there. <laughs> Who knows what what kind of bullshit act I would have had if uh, I didn't run into Mitzi, if I didn't get past at the store. 
one of the reasons why she passed me is this a, th a trick that we all used to do. I learned from the Todd. He would sit in the back of the room and he would sat next to Mitzi while Mitzi watched me and he would laugh hard. I went up there and I did my set and he laughed really hard. Mitzi just grabbed my arm. She goes, you're really funny. Wow. It's, it's weird, isn't it? How he describes the story of getting past at the comedy store because he describes it in a way that sounds like he scammed his way to get past. He didn't really earn it, right? They all knew that Mitzi was approaching maybe her end. Maybe she didn't have all her faculties. And they kind of took advantage of this lady, right? They kind of knew how to sort of play her. You'd go on stage, your other comedy friend will sit next to her in the back and just be overly laughing. The same way that Bert laughs now at the moment, try to go viral, right? The same way that Bert laughs now on pods and does the whole like crazy, wheezy, heezy laugh that you can just turn on and off so you can go viral. Those guys are doing that to Mitzi. So it's insane when he retells the story, he cries with a level of sincerity that makes you feel like he was a shock and he didn't know and it wasn't planned. It's like, bro, you planned it with your friend. You planned or put together a scenario that would result in you probably getting signed. You know, probably getting fucking past at the comedy store. Why are you acting like it was a big surprise? It's like, huh? I find that I find that really interesting. Call in for spots. You're paid regular. Wow. That was more important to me than any TV show. Like the TV show was just a lot of money. I was like, like well, I couldn't sleep that night. I was like, I'm a paid regular. Like I'm a real comedian. I'm a real comedian. A real comedian. I'm at the store. I'm a real comedian. I'm at the comedy store. I just, dude, I always knew I was going there. It was a religious call. And the comedy store was terrible. And there was all these people that she passed that were like, I'm telling you, talentless. January 6th, lock them up. Lock them all up. <laughs> the sad thing is, despite it being the meaning of life or whatever, Joe's legacy will not be his comedy. He will be remembered as the stool humper who won the entertainment industry lottery mm. and voluntarily let the world collectively watch him go insane on the internet over the course of thousands of hours of podcasting. A cautionary tale of money chasing, Dunning-Kruger, and unreconciled childhood trauma. I don't think he won the lottery, to be fair to him. I think he did just start podcasting I have early enough time and you stuck with it long enough that he is the the only one that's doing it at that sort of level so you're gonna get all the riches i mean it's sort of like first mover advantage but i don't think it was a luck thing i just think he just started you know he kind of trusted that level that style of media and went balls deep all you know all in two feet in with that and it obviously paid dividends but it's just a an example of life really right you don't really a lot of people don't really get what they quote unquote deserve they get what they can i don't know they negotiate but you kind of can leverage your fame to put yourself in positions that you don't really belong in and i think brett rogue is the best example of it because his fame is so crazy that he's able to just like yeah i'm a stand-up you know he can probably decide tomorrow if he wants to be a car designer it'll probably work out pretty well for him as well because of that level of celebrity and following will just follow him everywhere so that's the real cheat code just get rich get clouded up get famous and you can do whatever you want to and now Joe's really painted himself into a corner with this new Guy Texas project of his. And even his new audience has started to turn on him. Now he's truly up a creek, waist deep in the big muddy, because he made the mistake of expressing a political opinion on his podcast, an alleged holy citadel of free speech. Those new fans of his say he endorsed the wrong guy for president, and they are pissed. Joe's dusted off and wheeled out his apology podium once again, but it's too late. And now Trump is using his sorcery to turn his guys against Joe, even encouraging UFC fans to start booing him at the next event. Love it. Joe's in a bind, and it's a beautiful bind. If Trump loses, all these guys are going to blame Joe yep. and actively despise him forever. Mm -hmm. And if Trump wins, well, he has vowed to seek vengeance on all his critics in the media, which now includes Joe, who will only remain safe as long as his Navy SEAL pals stay loyal. Oh boy, that is bad. The world is leaving Joe behind. And just like Johnny Carson, I expect Joe will also become just a reclusive, depressed, rich guy. Hold up in his own personal Alamo, surrounded by rock-hard retired Navy SEAL guys just snorting <laughs> HGH and going on popper-fueled social media binges. Just like Johnny. 
And before I go, oh. there was one joke I'd I did enjoy. Awesome. The funniest way for me to die is if I die from COVID. Yeah. Okay, yes, it would. An honest <laughs> bit, and that was actually a good joke. I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. But I do have to disagree. It would be much funnier if he was discovered dead and frozen solid inside his famous <laughs> ice bath. Yeah, that's true. Imagine if he drowned in one of his ice baths. That would be actually really funny. If he actually drowned in an ice bath, it would be fucking hilarious. Just frozen over with nothing but a bit of bald scalp and two rock-hard frozen nipples poking through the ice layer on top. Well, now that Joe's stand-up cycle is finally closed, he'll be sent off to be with the other former greats, who have come and gone in and out of our lives like clouds that wisp together in the summer sky, where they are formed into ephemeral shapes then blown away and so we all too will blow away so enjoy it while it lasts guys we'll all be gone soon thank god appreciate each moment like it's your last because it could be thanks for everything joe thank you for your service you fought long and hard very hard but now it's time to burn the boats please stay in your castle and never do comedy again please Burn down this shitty Joe Rogan sphere of influence and finally allow the comedy ecosystem to regrow from its ashes. The only thing good that could come out of this special is that it hopefully destroys Joe's comedy ambitions completely and he finally retires. But I do believe him when he says that this was the hardest he's ever worked at anything. Jesus this Christ. is the guy who couldn't handle more than two weeks of working <laughs> yeah, in construction. Exactly, exactly. The only real job he's ever had. Exactly. And whose idea of hardship is spending 30 minutes in a the sauna. sauna. <laughs> Something regular people do to relax. <laughs> I give this thing a one out of five. Thanks. And sorry. Got that, gotta brilliant. go. Brilliant. Brilliant. In loving memory of Mitzi Shaw is fucking crazy. That's fucking crazy. In loving memory of Mitzi Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> masterpiece. Masterpiece. Absolute fucking masterpiece. Absolute fucking masterpiece. Big up, big up Elephant Graveyard. Big up the elephant graveyard. That was fucking fantastic. I loved every minute of it. Every minute of it. That was very well done. Great observations. Loads of stuff that I didn't notice, especially the bombing stuff. I honestly didn't notice it. You know, um, re equating the bombing and his nerves with the sweating and the little ticks and stuff was fucking brilliant. Loads of great observations. Loads of great philosophy talk. You know, I love that. Loads of good um, historical references pulled from that as well which i also love i really enjoy that man he really fucking smashed it that was a great review big up the different graveyard check him out you know his channel you know what he fucking does give him a fucking like he honestly deserves it great fucking work can't wait to see more of it from the kid can't wait to see more of it from the blood cart kid